from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to London, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here in the Excel Event Center. This huge location, 13,000 of HP Enterprise, H Hewlett Packard Enterprise's biggest customers. This is theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Mike O'Neill and Don Jones are here. They're both vice presidents of strategic alliances at HPE. Uh, Mike is responsible for SIs. Don, Don is really the ISV piece. Gentlemen, welcome Thank to theCUBE. Good to Dave. see you again. Yeah, Good to have you. All right, so Mike, let's start with you. Um, we're talking a little bit off camera about what is an SI, right? It's not the little guys in the channel that want to become SIs. Yep. We're talking about the big, world-class, global SIs, yep. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a set of uh, top-tier system integrators, composed of advisory firms, global system integrators, indie-based system integrators, and that collection today we see as critical, as we talked about the transformation areas that you continue to hear about, as we look at those platforms, those enablement platforms, the outcomes they're driving are fundamentally vertically or industry focused, and we need and rely upon our system integrators to close that mile, align with their practices, and deliver on those transformation All right, areas. so we're talking about a dozen multi-billion dollar global you know, companies with huge uh, presence in various industries, you know, world-class capabilities. Don, on the ISV side, H HP, you know, Classic, has always had a, an affinity with, with ISVs. Yeah. I mean, HP Oracle was famous in, in the 90s. HPE now, um, what do you see happening in the ISV world? What does this HP Enterprise mean to the ISV world? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, an amazing ride. If you think about it, HP's always had partnering in our DNA. And we recently broke out both the SIs and the ISVs from the business units themselves and created one consolidated team to focus on this effort under John Hinshaw's customer um, success organization. So when I think about the, SI, the ISV space, really there's kind of two types. There's the mega ISVs, so Microsoft, SAP, VMware, and Citrix, and then a whole portfolio of incubation partners. So the, the, the likes of Google, or Amazon, or Hortonworks, or Docker, we've really got to spend much more time and pay more attention to, to understand how that's going to impact the broad HPE ecosystem from HP itself to our, our channel partners going forward. And what about you know, this whole sassification of, of applications? How is that affecting partnerships? Is that a play for you, or is that? Yeah, it's, it's both a play and a partnering model, right? If you think about what a lot of these ISVs are doing, it's, it's adopting very much a hybrid approach to how they're thinking about IT in general. So when we think about those sassifications of solutions, some of those are going to be done on-premises, in a managed cloud, in a virtual private cloud, or, or in a public cloud. We've got to map all of those to the right place. And there's a huge intersection point between the SI work and the ISV work. Because quite often the solutions that the ISVs do with HP land, land through, the, through the SI channel to, to go oh, to market. Okay, so let's talk about that, that, that intersection. So Mike, uh, traditionally the, the big integrators, and still today, they go after what's hot, right? Yep. Whether it was BPO, ERP, yep. what's hot today, and what's the intersection with the ISV community? Big Dig data, is it well, digitization? It's, digital, it's really digital transformation. Yeah. Okay. It's really a driver for most all we're doing. You digital transformation, you got SAP work that still, as we go into HANA and we go into S4, you see the whole second generation of that large SAP opportunity. So in both cases, well aligned. We're talking about the hybrid cloud and the movement to the hybrid cloud and its piece in that digital transformation. We've got a very large SAP partnership that we manage that intersects very well with the practices, the SAP practices across the system integrated community. One of the things you, Dave, you were asking about SaaS, and we'll, we'll talk about it, but we launched a new partner program here today, and one of the elements of that partner program is specifically here in Europe, we, we launched an ISV SAS, service provider linkage, and the idea behind that is this program's enabling ISVs as they take traditional on-premise apps and look for SaaS-based solutions to, to intersect and align with service providers that utilize and are building up businesses around that particular application, application or market. And so this brokering, this marriage piece seems to be catching on very quickly for us to enable our partner community to move in that SaaS direction, supported by us, both on the service provider side and what is the ISV side. And what's HP's play there? I mean, it's, that's great that you're doing that, but how do you profit from that? We profit, yeah. Selling no, 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 infrastructure? Well, services, yeah, okay. there, there's, there's services, there's infrastructure for the SPs, 
and they're still supporting, as we see this hybrid cloud, there's still a, a, a presence for those applications on-premise on or uh, in the data center So as well. you see SaaS as an opportunity, not as uh, yeah. vaporizing your, yeah. your, your business. Yeah. No, and, and, the, and the ISVs are looking at us, and how can we better leverage enterprise services, that enterprise services and technology services asset inside of HP to take those SaaS solutions to the market and drive deployment, integration, and ultimately consolidation where it makes sense. And then, you know, uh, we're talking about, like I said, a dozen SIs or so, many more ISVs, obviously. Yep. And you guys could get pretty specialized with your ISV community. I mean, whether it's uh, you know, legal, compliance, and governance, and you know, really you know, healthcare. Can you talk about sort of how you segment the ISV community? Or are you really sort of going after the horizontal guys? Sure. No, no, it's, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. So when, I, when we think about it, there are, there are uh, ISVs have broad implications across all of our business units, from HP software to enterprise service to enterprise group. Those are the ones that we pull out and manage at a, at a global level. Again, with the four megas, Microsoft, SAP, VMware, and Citrix, a big portfolio of partners behind that called incubation partners. But if you are, say, Siemens doing PLM, you know, they're very applicable to really only one business unit at HP, and that's enterprise services where they're doing horizontal kind of work. That relationship is still managed by enterprise services and not part of our team. What it does let us do, though, is make some pretty specific bets. Well, we used to historically take SaaS solutions as an example and peanut butter them across the, uh, the, uh, the SIs and say, we hope somebody catches this and runs with it. Now Mike and I can collaborate and so say we're going to make a bet with Wipro in this space with this ISV solution. So it's something we can do now that we really didn't have the ability to think through and map out what that play would look so like. So let me understand that. So you're finding that certain SIs have an affinity for certain capabilities that you can marry with the ISV and provide infrastructure for because you're a horizontal infrastructure player. Is yeah. that, am I getting that right? Yeah, or? well, it, we are. We're a horizontal infrastructure player, but what, uh, a couple of things. Um, you, we just saw, again, kind of this is the first event where HPE is out as a public company. And what we spoke about, what we've done with alliances, we've been able to, as Don spoke about, where we sit within the organization, HPE organization, we sit right up in the, below the EC level, the, the EC, the MEG staff level, and the thinking behind that is, as I talked about, it enables us to be able to drive and complete solutions, both from a workload and delivery perspective. But further to that, we, we were organized BU to BU for just about every service and every support piece prior. EG did their piece, ES did their piece, software did their piece. Now our charter, Don and I's charter, is HP, uh, broadly HP, HPE. So we're responsible for the services piece, the software piece, and the, the uh, infrastructure piece as well. So as we think about these solution sets, we can marry them together because we have single conversation from the company to be able to figure out how we enable, if it's a, you know, if we talk the same scenario we're talking about, move to SaaS, we talk from a services perspective, we talk from an infrastructure perspective, or it's delivering solutions, infrastructure, software, and services. So it's a change in the way we've gone about partnering that we're, we're bullish on. I think it, it gets us right in the wheelhouse of what we keep talking about, responsiveness, simplicity, and speed. And the change is, there's an organizational change. Yeah. So you got senior level attention now. Yeah. And the leverage between ISV Sorry, yeah. and SI, right? Yeah. Is really yeah. the two big vectors. That yeah, yeah. We, we, we've, we've uh, in the past, we've been able to enable initiatives. We really see an opportunity as we continue to evolve this partnering model to go from initiatives to practices to actually businesses we're building with partners. You know, the scale of the, you heard around the Microsoft announcement today, that's really the type of alliances and partnerships and businesses we can believe we can build in market. So that's the big news today, let's talk about that. I mean, it sort of you know, tr trickled out before the show, obviously, yeah. but we had Satya you know, coming in, he took time off beamed from his board in, meeting yeah, yeah. Right, to, to beam in, right? Yeah. So how did that deal come about? Um, was it sort of enabled by HP's announcement that you're sort of exiting the, the public cloud? Did that sort of clear the, 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 the path? Maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so basically three things happened, all at the same time, really. You know, we started doing a lot of work with them closely on cloud productivity mobility. So Office 365 and Windows 10, what we're doing in that space. And the more that we talk with them, the more we realize our visions for hybrid cloud are ultimately super aligned. Um, you know, they certainly view infrastructure as the edge of their public cloud. And we view it the same way. So that, I guess that's point one. Uh, point two, Microsoft is a huge customer of HP's. You know, the vast majority of Azure is powered by HP infrastructure, I don't know if you're aware of that or not. So there was a natural synergy there. And then finally, when, when, we, when we step back and look at 
what partner we could do the most with from a breadth perspective. It wound up being pretty clearly Microsoft. That announcement today, if you noticed, included HP software assets on Azure, enterprise services delivery assets who can go do integration and system configuration for Azure, as well as the infrastructure side with the CS250. So it really was a draw from the complete buffet table that is HP Enterprise. Right, so, yes, I was aware actually. I didn't, I, somebody whispered to me sort of the rough size of the business, which is enormous. Yeah. So it's not a Barney deal where it's like, okay, we're going to do a deal, but you got to buy some of our hardware. You guys are already Exactly doing right. some substantial business and not just sort of one-offs, really powering a lot of the uh, Azure infrastructure, is exactly that right? right? So, that's yeah, exciting. Dave, this is, uh, Don can speak to as well, this is a progression of announcements with Microsoft as well, as, as, as what Antonio and, and uh, Satya alluded to, the Office 365, the Windows 10 announcement, this is kind of the third in the progression, and we continue to see success in market, working with Satya and the team and how we can evolve this, this business with Microsoft. Yeah, we, we, we did the O365 deal with them. It was codenamed Golden Spike, oddly enough. Um, um, and we, we are, we're launching uh, the first customer with the UK Ministry of Defense. So that customer needed a very unique set of requirements, as you can imagine, right, UK MOD. Um, and Mike Stone said, you know, what I need is like five nines. Microsoft only provides three nines through their vanilla delivery service. He needed some, some extra security features. So the partnership was just beautiful. So out of that deal with uh, the Ministry of Defense, we wind up putting an Azure footprint on HP's data center in the UK. To my knowledge, we're the only company outside of Microsoft itself running a pure version of Azure in our data center. So let's talk about Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Yeah. Um, your guys, Ted, I'd like to each of you sort of comment uh, it's, it's been coming for a while, we've, we've obviously known about it, but now it's, it's here. How has the discussion changed from a you know, partner standpoint? Mike, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, well, as, as I spoke to you a few minutes ago, Dave, I, we're advantaged by the fact that our charter, along, so as HP Enterprise was formed, the charter for our businesses and our responsibility changed from business unit orientation to full Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So in working with partners, it's significantly enabled us to be able to have a full-scale discussion. We, uh, I, we disadvantaged ourselves having a software discussion, services discussion, infrastructure discussion with partners in the past. Being able to bring that together, it aligns with the transformation area discussion. That transformation area is an enablement platform that includes all of them. So us being able to represent that whole platform, uh, we've been able to advance initiative and business discussions significantly quicker from a system integrator perspective than we did before. And I think the same and, as... Uh, and I would think that you know, the end-to-end the -end strategy from sort of you know, printers all the way through probably didn't resonate much with the SIs. I mean, they're looking for yeah. hardcore capabilities. Enterprise capabilities. So manage print services from time to time, yeah, but okay. not. But, but That's kind of nice. But, but, but it really wasn't, the, to your point, it wasn't the core of, of what we're driving. So right the now. focus message presumably resonates with them. Now, yeah. what about the ISVs? Sa same is true. If you think about even Microsoft managing HP, right? There, there was a totally separate team that managed our PC, OEM attached business that managed what we're doing with cloud and enterprise and that side of the house. So it was a very natural separation segmentation for the likes of Microsoft or an SAP. Uh -huh. um, so it's, it's, it's worked well for those guys. Okay, and then, of course, the other thing I have been talking about all day is the balance sheet. You know, so there's no debt on the balance sheet now. It's the, you know, the, the, the HPE balance sheet anyway. Um, so, what does that mean to, to you all? I guess you're not as, you know, you're not into M&A, but you know, you, I guess you are in the sense that you, you find opportunities and you can feed them to the M&A team. What does the, 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 the whole new structure of the balance sheet mean, if anything, to the SIs and to the ISVs and to your businesses in general? I don't, yeah, from my perspective, I don't think our partners per se, you know, they're looking for us to determine through part, you know, inorganic or organic, figure out how to fill the holes and make sure that we can deliver, and we talked about a partner ecosystem. Um, I, I think what they're looking for us to deliver on versus the balance sheet uh, expectation and opportunity is really the promises around predictability, speed, and focus. And in order for us to deliver on it, in our piece of the business, we've got to be responsive, we've got to be easy to work with, we've got to continue to be innovative, we've got to continue to be collaborative and predictable. And these are fundamentals that now that we have really a purvey over the whole domain, we can, we can drive and set the bar for it. Yeah, so I guess I'm asking, are you guys are a top of the funnel for deal flow? Do you get a lot of, yeah. hey, uh, HP should think about buying this company, or maybe you, know, you if, should. If you, think about, if you think about build, partner, or buy, we're certainly in the partner part of that. We do work closely with HP Ventures, on yeah. where they see opportunities that should be going one way or the other. 
and you know, should we be looking at a similar asset that we can partner on as opposed to an acquisition? Well, you called out Hortonworks before. You've exactly obviously right. got a board seat on Hortonworks. You've made yeah. a $50 yep. million yep. investment in the company. Yep. So things like that, obviously. Oh, dear. Yeah, same sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't want to, you know, no, exclude no, no. any, right? No, 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 it's all public right? stuff. Right. No, 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 we don't it's exclude yeah. any of the players. Yeah, yeah, Cloud Era, right. you know, yeah, Hortonworks, yeah. And, and, and others, yeah. so. Others, yeah. All right, good gentlemen, we're out of time, but so thanks very much for coming by the Cube. Dave, really always a pleasure. Yeah, you appreciate it. All right, thank you. Keep right there, buddy. We'll be back from HPE Discover in London. This is the Cube. Right back. Thank you. Thank you.